What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky Pete here, back with all of the news after week two of the regular season. Guys, we picked up an awesome victory. We had a lot of young players step up, and we ended up scoring 35 points. We had five touchdowns, and it was really nice to see not only the offense finally start to find a groove, but the defense forcing turnovers and putting pressure on the quarterback. It was a good game for the Raiders. However, next up we have the Patriots, and we know that that is not going to be an easy game. But let's go ahead and get going with the game prep here to start because we are definitely going to need it heading into a game against New England on the road, no less. Uh, developing promising quarterback obvi or cornerback, obviously, this has been working out for us. Both Hayden and McGill had a great game, so we definitely want to keep working on them, getting them those experience points. Um, and you know slowly increasing their awareness that's gonna be a huge thing to make sure they're on the right at the right place at the right time so we don't have breakdowns in our defense Khalil Mack again I gotta keep working on him uh, he's been kind of disappointing so far like he really hasn't yeah see I should have had more tackles um you know I don't know he's really not stepping his game up like I would like but he's a young player and it's it's definitely coming you know he's gonna be a star and we're gonna get him there uh, it's just been a slow time coming in the meantime. Uh, obviously, last but not least, we're going to go with Derek Carr here. Uh, he's going to remain on the bench. You know, Shab just had a great game. But I do have big plans for Derek Carr later in the season, and I want to continue to vet to develop him from the bench. And uh, eventually when he takes over, we'll be ready to go. And I'm excited about that. That's not to say he's going to be the franchise quarterback or anything. He could get there. We're going to have to wait and see how he responds to uh, finally getting some minutes in a regular season game. However... You know, if I find a quarterback I like in the draft or something like that, we'll probably roll with that. But we'll see. You know, if Derek Carr steps up, that's going to put my needs elsewhere, and I'd probably draft somebody else. So it's all going to depend on how he plays, pretty much. Uh, let's go ahead and top stories. Let's look at the draft stories here, which it's finally here. I didn't see it in week one. I was worried about it. So Jaquise Talbot was a rugby player just a few weeks ago, but his strength and endurance translates well to football. So that's a pretty cool little storyline. We'll have to kind of see what that means. And then UCLA middle linebacker Jace Richardson has been by his father's side on the or during football games since he could walk. So his dad was a coach, which means he probably has a high IQ. His awareness might be really good coming out of the draft for a rookie. So that's something to keep an eye on, too. Uh, definitely having an experienced player who knows things, knows where to be and stuff like that. It's very, very important. Uh, progressing players, I'll, I'll do all that off camera. Also, shout out really fast to No Chains, who uh, helped make my awesome new thumbnails. I don't know if you guys have seen them yet or not. I guess you probably did if you clicked on this video. But, you know, he took time out of his day to make those for me. And I really appreciate it. He has an awesome Madden series going on as well, where he is the New York Jets. So, if, uh, definitely go check it out. He's awesome. And, uh, again, dude, thanks... Thanks so much for the thumbnails. They're awesome. Uh, finances, I definitely need to get into this. We're in the positive again, but, you know, next week we're on the road, so we'll probably be in the negative, unfortunately. I really... Tickets sold last home game. Um, all right, well, I need to really start good value. Okay, let's not make it such a good value because I really need to start bringing in more money than I am right now. Again, you know, let's raise it up. I like that they're all good value. I want to take care of the fans, but I need to start making some money here. Uh, so we'll raise the tickets all up and hopefully gain a little bit more money next time we have a home game. But, you know, again, we're on the road this upcoming week, so we'll be in the negative soon enough. Decent value, decent value. Ah, oh, man, we didn't sell a single one? Wow. All right. We'll have to, oh, that's a Super Bowl shirt. Never mind. I was like, okay, uh, decent value. I mean, they're all decent value. That's okay. We'll keep that there for now. Concessions we've already tinkered with a little bit. Team revenue. Uh, all right, income, you know, gaining about $2 million so far, I suppose. I think this is for the entire season, yeah. So we've gained about $2 million so far. I don't know why it says that, because I started off with $3 million and I definitely don't have that now. But maybe it's just since the uh, season started, the regular season. That's probably it. Uh, but, yeah, we have some work to do, guys. Uh, again, owner mode's a lot more difficult now, and we're definitely going to need to pick it up. Let's see, marketing, player marketing. Let's do something with this. Khalil Mack. So what can we do here? Oh, those are just jersey sales. Okay. Uh, is there a way that I can boost this up at all? Doesn't look like it, unfortunately. Okay. There's got to be a way. I'll figure it all out and post it in a future video. Uh, last thing, sliders. Let's go change this really fast. Not last thing, but let's change the sliders really quickly. 
again, I was okay with that. I felt like uh, they had a lot more difficult of time running the ball. So run blocking, I want to take down a few notches. We'll see how that turns out. And fumbles, they were fumbling it a lot. Now, if I take it down, does that mean that fumble? I don't know. Let's take it down a little bit. And hopefully face masks were not an issue last game. Hopefully that is good to go. Again, we'll be tinkering with this quite frequently until we figure it out. So uh, overall, last game I felt okay with everything, though. You know, I didn't really change much in terms of the defense. Uh, I just had a better game from the uh, week number one. So we'll, we'll test this out, see how it goes. Hopefully it works out for us. And again, we'll just tinker with it until we all like it. So awards, let's look at the awards after week two. Weekly awards, obviously we can't check the rest until week number eight. Alfred Morris winning the NFC Player of the Week, 178 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Uh, Sam Acho, Acho, I'm sorry, uh, two sacks and a fumble forced for the Cardinals. Uh, Kiko Alonso, 15 tackles, wow, and two sacks. And then Wes Welker, five catches, 107 yards and two touchdowns. So great game by him. Back to the, uh, let's, now nah, we'll, we'll check league stats soon enough, guys. I just want to allow teams to build up some stats first. We will look at the schedule and all the wins and losses and stuff like that really fast, though. League schedule. Obviously, it's going to show us week three. We'll go up to week two. Steelers and Ravens. The Steelers picking up a win over the Ravens. I think that makes the Ravens 0-2 so far. So interesting there. Steelers are 2-0, if I remember correctly. The Bills shutting out the Dolphins 20-0. The Redskins beating the Jaguars 26-20. The Cowboys picking up a victory over the Titans 17 to 16. The Giants beating the Cardinals 23 to 16. Uh, New England barely getting by the Vikings 24 to 23. The Saints beating the Browns 30 to 23. Falcons beating the Bengals. Ah oh, man, Bengals, come on! I was rooting for you in that division 27 to 10. The Lions beating the Panthers 21 to 9. 20 to 16. The Bucks are going to take over the Rams there. The Seahawks picking up a victory, 23-17 over the Chargers, 35-16. We might have had the most impressive win of the week. I said, oh, never mind, I see that Philly game down there. But still, very impressive win. I'm stoked with that. The Packers beating the Jets, 26-23. The Broncos beating the Chiefs, 23-20. The 49ers whooping up on the Bears. I like it, 29-13. And then the Eagles winning on Monday Night Football over the Colts, 40-12. Man. That, that's a beatdown right there on Monday Night Football, no less. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? There was something else that I wanted to do. Uh, I'm going to wait for scouting, guys. We'll get into scouting later. I just really want to save up some points. As you can see, I don't really have many scouting points at all to work with. So it's going to take time on that, but we will get there and start scouting players. I guess I can look at the, the top names in the draft class. We'll do that really fast. And do I really don't have any scouting points unless this is a lot different. Let's see how much it costs to scout things. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't cost as much anymore. Okay, I see. I was like, man, I don't have many scouting points at all. So Jonathan Woods is the projected number one overall pick right now. Outside linebacker from Texas A&M. He is six foot four, and a zone blitz pass rusher. I like that a lot. And again, like I said, I'm trying to find another linebacker to put next to Khalil Mack. And, you know, I don't know that I'm going to have the first pick, but he definitely seems like a good candidate. Uh, Hawking's here, the number two pick. I have no idea how to say that first name. Mark Hindi, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, a lot of linebackers up here early on. You see a defensive end. Uh, two tight ends in the top six. That's pretty crazy. Both vertical threats. They're both pretty tall. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. You know, that definitely adds a new dimension to the game. And tight ends are increasingly popular among NFL teams. Another right end, a left tackle, running back. Got our first quarterback down here at 11. A uh, wide receiver, definitely something I need to go after. And look at this, a vertical offense. So you know he's fast, and he's a red zone threat at 6'5". That is somebody to keep an eye on. He might be my main target. We'll have to scout him later on. Uh, just some of the other picks, uh, other positions up in the first round there. But we'll get into all that in a future episode, guys. And yeah, that's probably going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm really excited to get into week number three against the Patriots. I'm loving this game so far, and I will see you guys there. Later.